What's up guys, Jesse Khan from ProPlay Games here, and I'm here with my top 16 deck profile from YCS Salt Lake City. Before I begin, shoutouts to ProPlay Games and Ultra Pro, best team in the world, and also to uh, Asala uh, with the Thantrake for the help of the decklist. We played the exact same cards in, uh, in our decklist, and we both got top 16. So yeah, start off, it's three Dark Worms, and then the Cheezer in front of the gate. I played the FTK. Uh, the FTK is the best build by far, in my opinion, because the, it lets you beat Draco really easily, which typically should be a, a harder match for Pendulum. Um, they don't play hand traps, so you can just kill them really easily. And even in the mirror match, uh, there's not as many hand traps in the main deck. Or either 0 to 3, sometimes more, but it's not very common. Uh, so killing them becomes very easy. And it, it's, it's just worth the couple spots to play the FTK. Um, I don't regret it at all. Like, it's very good. Won me a lot of games. I FTK'd probably once every match. Um, not every match I FTK'd, but some matches I FTK'd twice. Like... It was so free. Um, I, I definitely think moving forward, everyone should be playing the FTK build if they're playing Pendulum. Um, and the five Mythical Beasts. Um, yeah, very good. They're extenders for your plays to get to Electromite before you Pendulum Summon, which is pretty crucial to get the FTK. Now, obviously, the, both their effects just come up a lot. Um, and then for the Magicians, same compact engine as I did for Atlanta. I do not think uh, Purple and Black Fang are like that good. Um, they're like good sometimes, but you do not want to draw multiples of them. And like uh, at the start of your turn, on the first turn, they don't really do anything. Um, this doesn't contribute to your combo at all going first, and um, this can contribute to your combo, but it requires you to be somewhat set up already because you have to have a graveyard. So we didn't play more than that. And then for the one of magicians, it's uh, Zanki uh, negates lights, but the main reason is because they only level seven. Magician. Uh, the other one is a water, so you play the one this one because it's dark. Oaf, because once you grind, it's good to get off Pendulum Call, and then the, the bricks for Chrono and Astro. Three Chrono, three Astro, obviously just the best extenders in the deck. Um, one really good play to note, uh, people say this deck was weak to hand traps. One of the best things you can do with this deck is abuse these two together. Um, oftentimes you can use Chrono's effect special summon and saw from the hand, and summon a Jackal with it. So often this means like if you have like a Cerberus, you can destroy itself to add Jackal, and then on the destruction, Chrono summons itself plus Jackal. If you have like a Dark Room on top of this, you can summon Dark Room, get one of the gates, make a collection with Dark Room, and uh, or, or sorry, scale the gates, so you get two counters on this, and then you can make a collection with Dark Room and, the, and, and Chrono. Um, and then they, they, you can play through Ogre and Valor and all that stuff. So that's something a lot of people don't really do, but it's like one of the best plays you can do with uh, Chrono and Astro. Um, oh, one thing to note is that we didn't play hand traps. They uh, aren't effective enough to warrant being played. Like, Ash is not good in the mirror match, and it's like it's still only okay versus everything else. And Ogre is only really good in the mirror match, and it's like okay versus Draco, too. Uh, and in general, like, they're not amazing versus the mirror match and Draco. Even if you have a hand trap in the mirror match, sometimes it's not that good. Um, yeah, so especially going first, we won't have hand traps. And the best way to beat a hand trap is to have more combo cards, so we just wanted to play only combo cards. Um, yeah, I, I decided hand traps going second, but I think 100% correct to just not play any in the main deck uh, for Pendulum. Especially because like if they make a board, like it's really not unreasonable to break it. Um, this deck can do that pretty easily, go three to four negates. Um, three alert for draw power to get you better combo pieces and two desires. Uh, this is not once per turn, so I play three of this, two of this. Uh, two instant fusion for the FTK. It is not actually that bad to draw. Uh, when you draw it, you can uh, FTK way easier. Like you don't need as many combo pieces. And if you draw it going second, you make Thalos nice restrict. So that helps break boards. But if you draw multiples, you only use one a turn. So don't play more than two. And unlike Atlanta, it's only two pendulum call um, because it does conflict with the FTK. It's still good to clear your cloggy hands and just like fix your hands. And you can still FTK sometimes with this card. It's just like. If you play the FTK and more than two copies of Pendulum Call, you'll have a lot of awkward hands where you could FTK, but you can't because of this. Um, two Dragon Shrines, just like Desires. I don't want to play a third because I can't always discard extra copies for, for Pendulum Call, but it's still really, really good. It's like one of the best cards when draw in the deck. And then Foolish. So that's the main deck, 40 cards. Got my best field center. Uh, the Fusions. The two Spring King for the FTK, Vortex for Absolute, 
and then the two instant fusion targets. Uh, this was really good for breaking boards. I used it like four times in a turn twice, just by using, bringing it back with Black Fang over and over and over again, because it is a dark spellcaster. And uh, for some reason, people forget that if you ride it all Black Fang, it doesn't die in the end phase. And then because of that, your opponent can't attack you. So people, the people play go format and just don't remember that when it's on the field, they can't attack. So they'll set up a board to kill me, and they just can't deal with Thousand Eyes. They lose because of that. So yeah, those five fusions. Uh, Ignister and Omega. I did not play Supreme King Clear Wing because I didn't have the space. Uh, even then, I'd play other cards over it. Um, this was the best card for clearing boards in the mirror match. And Supreme King was just like okay with other stuff. But it, it wasn't like good enough to warrant me playing it. This is the go to card for clearing the board in the mirror match, though. Uh, once you force down the negates, your ideal place is summon this with Supreme King next to it. Um, and then this copy this. So you can uh, bounce two of their cards and pop two of their cards, and then you make a Harbinger. So that way you, they have no field and you still put up a negate. So that's like the go-to play. And this is when you get Sherry's, and against Draco as well, it's good. Because um, it doesn't get popped. And then for the Exceeds, Harbinger, Absolute, and Tornado. I only played one rank four, because uh, I figured stuff like Dweller just is not as important in this deck, because you're just executing them most of the time turn one anyways. Uh, most of the time, I'm not making more than one ring four. Um, and often when I can, it's because I have harmonizing so I can make these two. So I have enough options there. I didn't need more than that. Uh, Flink Monsters, Underclock Taker. It just gets you out of random spots. Um, like, you get stuck. It's like a transition tool. I never use its effects. Um, it does help, help you FTK, though, if you get cherries. Because you can Instant Fusion, burn for 500. Um, and then Link for this. Make Supreme King under it, copy one for 4,000, then link these two together for a Zephra, and then link, and then fuse for this one, and then another 4,000, that's game. So, um, that's not super hard. It's just four dark monsters, and infusion, and one other monster in the field. So, even if you got cherries, sometimes it's still just too much, and they can still just get FDK'd. And that happened once this weekend, where it's got cherries and still killed them. Um, of course, you have to try instant infusion for that, though, so it is harder. Uh, two Electrums. Don't need a third, definitely not. Uh, if you really run out, like this just copies it. It's not needed it more than that. Um, Zephra, good end on and Borla because it's outs things. Um, really important. For the side deck, uh, the same thing as last time, played just three of five different cards, felt really good. Three evenly matched. Uh, best card was Draco. That's all I really sided against, but other flock eight decks, I decided like Paleo, I'd side this in two. Uh, three turn twisters, deal with any deck that plays like uh, Anti Spell, or Slaughter Background, generally like Trick Stars. This is really good. I like this over Cosmos Cyclone because it synergizes with Black Fang and Dark Worm. And also, just hitting two backrooms instead of one is often just, like gets there. Like, things on Cosmic just isn't enough, and this is just is. Um, three Sphere Modes. This was underwhelming, this event, because a lot of people weren't playing Standard Magician. They were playing the Zexel build or the FTK. Um, mostly the Zexel build, though, and because of that, this was like. Okay, but not amazing. So, this is good, but it's probably gonna get switched out, especially as people start transitioning more to FTK builds, because this doesn't do anything against the FTK. You don't need soft boards. And then three Ash, Rogue um, for the prior four weeks. These were cherries, and I cut them for Ashes because I've been playing a lot of Rogue and Regionals. But this event, I started off my first eight rounds with seven mirror matches, so I wish they were cherries. Um, I'm probably gonna try to fit cherries back in the deck because they're really good going second. Uh, I mean, these were still okay. Um, I mean, it's like I played three Trick Star and uh, one Draco. Uh, no, two Draco, but yeah. And then three Ogre. I think it's the best hand trap in the mirror match. Uh, it, unlike Cherries, it's good in the grind games. It's good at almost any point. Uh, hitting Electrum is really strong and often just ends the opponent's turn. Um, yeah, this is, and it's good against uh, Draco to an extent as well. Um, they'll get greedy and like try Heritage for three. You can just pop it and then the turn ends. So, yeah. That's for the deck. Again, a uh, huge shout out to Ultra Party and Public Games.